So in this lecture, we are going to discuss the factors affecting the force of contraction of a muscle. We were uh, previously discussing the properties of skeletal muscles and uh, in the properties of skeletal muscles, we have discussed the excitation of the uh, muscles and uh, contraction or contractility of the skeletal muscles. Now we are uh, discussing the factors which affect the contractility or the force of contraction of a skeletal muscles. So there are basically four basic uh, factors which affect the force of contraction of a muscle. First factor is the strength of stimulus, like the more the, um, the force of stimulus, uh, weak stimulus or strong stimulus, then the num number of stimuli, then the temperature of the stimulus, uh, the temperature, uh, the effect of temperature on the uh, force of contraction, and then the effect of load, the amount of weight uh, that is put on the muscle, that effect of that weight on the force of contraction. So we have already discussed the effect of strength, uh, uh, strength of uh, stimulus on the force of contraction, and we have discussed that there are basically the force of stimulus could be subminimal. Subminimal will not excite the muscle. Then it could be minimal. It could just excite the muscle. It could be super uh, submaximal. Like it, the submaximal is more than minimal, or a muscle which requires a force more than a minimum. Then the stimulus could be uh, maximum and supra maximal, uh, above which there is uh, the force of contraction cannot be increased. That was something discussed previously in the topic of excitation. Then uh, today we are going to discuss in detail the effect of number of stimuli in um, the uh, the effect of number of stimuli on the uh, force of contraction. We have uh, previously discussed the a single uh, muscle uh, curve, the simple muscle uh, curve, and we discussed that the simple muscle curve uh, is having uh, two main parts: the 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 contraction, the re the contraction phase, and the relaxation phase. Initially, a stimulus is applied. There is no uh, force, uh, no contraction for a certain amount of time. That is not is the latent period. Then uh, contraction starts, and the contraction ends at the uh, peak. That is known as uh, maximum or uh, a PMR point of maximum contraction. P, uh, PMR or point of maximum contraction. And after the PMR, uh, the muscle starts relaxing and then that reaches the uh, point of maximum relaxation. So uh, PMC, sorry, PMC, point of maximum uh, contraction. And then after that is the PMR. So a sing, uh, simple muscle curve, uh, for example, a single muscle which is hanging This muscle has been, for example, experimentally taken from a frog. Experiments are normally done on muscles which has been normally taken from frogs and then are extrapolated to the human muscles. So if this uh, muscle is uh, stimulated just once, and if this muscle has a pointer or a pencil attached, then this will grow. And uh, this will uh, draw a graph. As soon as the uh, stimulus is applied, uh, the initial there will be no force of contraction, there will be no movement, then the movement will start like this and it will come down. So initially there will be contraction and then relaxation. Then depending upon the time of stimuli, the number of stimuli and the time of stimuli, we can have um, multiple effects. So we, we basically divide the number of stimuli into two main groups. Either we apply two stimuli or either we apply a lot of stimuli, multiple stimuli. So if we apply two stimuli, two stimuli, one stimulus uh, just after the other stimulus, then depending upon the duration or the time difference between these stimuli, we can have three important um, results. The first uh, effect is known as beneficial effect. Suppose, for example, a, a muscle has been activated and it has uh, caused uh, a contraction and it has just relaxed. As soon as it is relaxed, a, 
another another stimulus is applied and then we have another curve so if we have a two stimuli or one stimulus is applied and after uh, the stimulus uh, the muscle has contracted and it has contracted and it has then reached relaxation at the end of re relaxation if the second stimulus is applied then we will have another contraction but the force of contraction of this second contraction will be more than the first you can look at this the force of contraction was at this level in the first contraction but at the relaxation after the end of relaxation as another stimulus is applied so this time the contraction is increased in intensity so the the second curve which is drawn is basically is having increased in intensity or the force of contraction is increased this is known as beneficial effect and beneficial effect is because once a stimulus has been applied and the muscle has contracted a lot of heat accumulates in the muscle and that heat basically favors uh, the contraction process so when another second stimulus come this muscle contracts more forcefully and the graph has increased then if the muscle has not been allowed to relax completely and a second stimulus is applied over here when the muscle is just in the relaxation phase one one stimulus has been applied the muscle has contracted and it is just relaxing it is just relaxing when another stimulus has been applied then we will have a uh, we will have another uh, contraction we will have another contraction and the both the both the uh, both the uh, graphs or the stimuli will combine together and they will combinedly make a graph which will look like this in which you can see that the the second graph has rather been uh, superimposed on the first one so the uh, both the graph has graphs has combined it is also known as incomplete summation now what is summation if a um, if a muscle has been stimulated it has contracted and during the contracting contraction phase another stimulus is applied over here in the beneficial effect the second stimulus was applied here in the super imposition in the super imposition the second um, the second stimulus was applied here and in the and in the third uh, category or the third form which is known as summation the, the second stimulus was applied here in the contraction phase so first was after the after the uh, relaxation phase that resulted into beneficial effect then in the second category the second stimulus was applied to this muscle during the relaxation phase that resulted into incomplete summation or superimposition and then in the third uh, category if the second stimulus is applied in the contraction the muscle has contracted and during the contraction a second stimulus is applied then it will make just one graph it will just make one graph but the force of contraction or the strength will be far more than this you can see this the strength of contraction has increased so these are three effects if two stimuli are uh, given to uh, one muscle Dep then depending upon the timing duration of difference between the two stimuli we can have multiple three different effects then if a lot of stimuli are given to a muscle this is one muscle which is hanging and we are stimulating it again and again and again then what will happen uh, there are two possibilities first one is the fatigue of muscle and the uh, second is tightness in fatigue of the muscle the muscle when initially stimulated it will make a graph like this you can see it has making a graph like this then if it is stimulated a second time the graph the graph will rather increase in size the second graph will rather increase in size and but after that if it is stimulated again and again at a high frequency then the the muscle will get fatigued or its responsiveness to the stimuli will or the stimulus will decrease 
we will stimulate the muscle but it will no more it will no more uh, respond to that stimulus and that condition is known as fatigue but what uh, are the causes of uh, muscle fatigue what um, factors contribute to the fatigue of muscle why uh, the muscle uh, is not responding to the stimuli when it is uh, being stimulating uh, stimulated again and again there could be multiple factors but uh, the fatigue occurs at multiple uh, multiple levels first of all if the signal is coming from the brain through the spinal cord to the muscle then the cells which are in the human brain which are generating the signals they get fatigued then uh, the signal from the brain is uh, basically transferred to the spinal cord the cells in the spinal cord they can get fatigued uh, like their intensity or the their uh, stimuli they decreases they they stop stimulating the muscle then when the signal reaches the muscle level acetylcholine which is secreted which we have discussed and which is which uh, basically helps in the contraction of muscle that acetylcholine decreases and finally fatigue can occur inside the muscle when the oxygen decreases when metabolites or waste products are formed or when lactic acid is formed so these are multiple factors which contribute towards the fatigue and fatigue is when the muscle is stimulated again and again and its response to the multiple uh, multiple stimuli decreases 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 until and until the muscle does not respond to the uh, stimulus then the final uh, the final effect of multiple stimuli is tightness if for example a muscle is uh, stimulated again and again with high frequency with very high frequency so that there is no gap between the uh, different uh, stimuli then the muscle can get uh, into a constant phase of contraction for example this muscle you can see if the muscle has gone into contraction and the contraction uh, phase has been sustained for so long before relaxation or either or there could be no relaxation that is known as the uh, tightness this tightness is different from the uh, condition or uh, pathological tightness which is basically caused by some bacteria so these are the uh, multiple effects these are the uh, the uh, factors these are the factors which affect the force of contraction and then the uh, we have discussed the uh, impact of increased number of stimuli on the force of contraction so if two stimuli are given uh, depending on the point, the duration of between the two stimuli it could cause beneficial effect it could cause superimposition or it could it could cause summation but if multiple stimuli are given repeatedly with some time duration the muscle could get uh, fatigued and with the uh, increasing stimuli uh, stimulus the muscle will no more respond to the stimulus but when a lot of stimuli are given to one muscle uh, with high frequency uh, like the gap between the stimuli is decreased and there is no time for relaxation the muscle goes into contraction and that is known as uh, tightness and this tetanus is basically different from pathological tetanus which is caused by some bacteria uh, but uh, the phenomena is uh, phenomena is almost the same then we have uh, another effect uh, that is known as uh, trepi trepi is basically when uh, when a lot of it is like tetanus when a lot of uh, stimuli are given to the muscle the muscle is stimulated again and again with increased strength but the frequency is less than uh, that for tetanus like it is stimulated again and again it is stimulated again and again but not at the frequency at which tetanus occurred like the frequency is small or less than that for tetanus then the that that uh, that contribute to more force of contraction the uh, just like uh, summation and that effect is known as trepi So that's all for today. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thanks a lot for watching.